Hi there! Today we will be talking about how to set up a drawing in Rhino. For this project, we first need an aerial photo from Google Maps of our site and our building. As you can see here, I have the satellite view pulled up of the building that I wish to observe. Be sure to include some context, such as the neighboring buildings, as well as the street and the sidewalk. There are many ways to take a screenshot on a Windows computer, but I personally like to use the snipping tool. When taking a screenshot, make sure to include this scale down at the bottom here. So here I'm going to use my snipping tool. I'll select new and I will take my screenshot. Once we've taken our screenshot, we'll open up Rhino. Once we've opened Rhino, the first thing we want to do is set up our units. This can be reached by typing in the command units and hitting enter. This should pull up a dialog box. In this case, we want our model to be drawn in feet. If you're more comfortable using the metric system, that's perfectly okay. You're welcome to use meters, but for this tutorial, everything will be in feet and inches. We also want our distance display to be in feet and inches, and we want it to be the, to the nearest fourth inch. After you've got that set up, you can hit OK. The next thing we want to do is set up our layers. As a reminder, your layers are over here on the right. We'll want to have a total of eight layers. As a refresher, here's how you add a new layer. Click on this new layer icon here, and you can type the name in here. In this case, we want a new layer called Annotation. You can also change the layer color by double clicking on this box here. We want the annotation layer to be red. The other layers should be as follows. Aerial as white, building as blue, property line as magenta, trees as green, curb as yellow, striping as gray, and again, annotation as red. You should note that these colors are only the colors that will be displayed, not the colors that will be printed. Now that we have the file set up, it's time to insert our photo. The easiest way to do this is to use the command picture frame. And here we can insert our aerial photo. Make sure when you're inserting it, you're holding down shift in order to insert it straight. You also want to make sure that your north arrow is pointing straight up. Because we want to draw this drawing in a one-to-one -one scale, which means that in the drawing space, one foot is equal to one foot in real life, we'll need to scale this, scale this picture appropriately. This can be done by finding the scale on your screenshot. Type the command scale in. We need to select this picture and hit enter. Pick the beginning and then the end of this line here and type in the scale, in this case 20 feet. You can check this by using distance. Type distance in, and we can measure again from the beginning to the end. And you can find that distance up at the top here. So 19 feet, 10 inches, it's pretty close. Now you want to make sure that this picture is on the correct layer. So right now you can see it's on curb but we want it to be on Arial. So you can do this by right-clicking Arial and selecting Change Object Layer. This will help because you can then lock this layer here and then this picture won't move as you are drawing on top of it. Now that my layers are all set up, I'm ready to trace over the image. Now because this image is oriented true north, as indicated here, my property isn't exactly at 90 degrees which means that it'll be a little bit difficult to make sure that all my lines are perpendicular to each other. Therefore, I'm going to use the offset command to make sure that my lines are parallel. I'll start first with the property line. Now I'm going to choose polyline tool over here. And I'm going to trace this back fence along the line here. I then want to offset this line to create the front end of the property. So to do this, I'll type in the command offset. I'm going to choose 
this back line to offset. And then to manually choose the distance, I'll click the distance. I'm going to click the line I want to offset. And then I'll hit the distance that I want. So it looks like my property ends right about there. I'll be able to choose which side of the line I want to offset. In this case, obviously I want to go this way. And then one last click and I'll get my other side of the property. This line can easily be adjusted if I select it. And I make sure that I have my gumball operation on. I can easily slide it up, down, or left and right. And using this tool, I can make sure that I'm lined up properly. Now you also want to make sure that you have your O snaps on. And one that will be particularly important in this case will be perpendicular. This will help if I select a line and I want to go from here and it'll snap it so that it's perpendicular to the other one. Again, I can use either the gumball or I can use the move tool to select where the other edge of this property line is going to go. Now in this case, I want it right along the fence line there. I can use the trim tool to help clean up some of these lines. Another useful tool is the stretch tool. We want to select the line we want to adjust, select the end point and the other end point, and then scale the line appropriately until it hits the edge to create a perfect corner on both sides. After I've traced it over everything I want to indicate in my drawing, I can use the hatch tool to shade my building. But before I do that, I need to make sure that all the lines in my building are joined. Now an easy way to do that is to right click on the layer building and choose select objects. That will select all of the lines on my building layer. I can use the command join to create a closed curve. Once the lines are joined, we can use the hatch command. We're going to select the boundary of our building and hit enter. This dialog box comes up and as you can see, there's a variety of different hatches that you can use. You can also import your own hatches. But for this case, let's stick with hatch one. This is going to be a series of evenly spaced horizontal lines. However, for this case, let's rotate them by 45 degrees. The pattern scale indicates how close or how far apart the lines are. For this example, let's choose five. As you can see here, it's giving you a little bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. Once everything has been chosen, hit OK. As you can see here, the hatch is being shown in green, which means that it's on the trees layer. But we want it on the building layer, so we can select it, right-click on the building layer, and choose Change Object Layer. It's important to note that the hatch is a separate object from the curve, so I recommend that if you're going to use Hatch, that you do it once everything has been finalized. The last tool we're going to talk about is the Block Tool. A Block Tool is good for items that need to be repeated often, such as trees or toilet stalls. In this case, we'll be using it for our trees. Let's first change the color so that it's a little bit easier to see. Now, here you can see I've drawn a simple tree. To create a block, I'll type in the command block. I'll need to select the items that I want to include, so in this case these three, and then hit enter. It'll ask you to choose a base point, and then we'll pull up this dialog box here. We'll name this tree, and hit OK. We can then copy this block wherever we have trees. Just an example, I'll show you why blocks are useful. Let's say we want to add some simple branches. We can then double click on the block and select Add Object. We'll choose those two branches and hit Enter. If we hit OK and zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that each of these blocks have had the branches added, no matter if they've been scaled or not. To remove this object, we'll double click on a block again, choose Remove Object, select the objects we want to delete, hit Enter, and OK. Now, these have just been 
removed back to simple curves and the blocks were not affected. If you want to explode a block, simply use the command explode. This will affect only the block that you've selected and not all of them. The others will remain blocks.